Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today I wanted to share with you um, the infamous pest everybody has encountered, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, whether you're a succulent collector or you have house plants or garden plants. And that's the mealy bug. Yep, good old mealy bug. Gotta love it. So I wanted to just show you what I did. So come on, let's go take care of it. started with the mealy bug thing I went to the mailbox and I have plant mail from Emily from the succulent greenhouse I'm so excited she's got a wide variety of plants a wide variety of succulents and cacti and I'm so excited so what a cute little card Emily thank you so let's get those open and of course I need to be careful now because, like I said, I did find some mealybugs on some of my plants outside. We're going to have to keep them away from our new plants. Aw, oh, little stickers. I totally love it. Little cactus stickers. Plants are like friends. How cute. And what I ordered from her. Oh, look how cute are the mother of thousands, the pink butterflies. Oh my goodness. I don't have these. And look, all these little leaves up here already have new little babies. I am so excited, Emily. And they are already rooted, which is perfect. Come on, baby. They have a nice root system. Oh, excellent. I am extremely happy. This was a good thing to get today to brighten my mood. I don't feel so hot today. And I'm a little distressed with the mealy bugs. So this really brightened my day. Thank you, Emily. I know exactly where they're going. They are going outside. in the pot where that big paddle cactus is. So yeah, they came very well packed and they came very in very good condition, thanks. Yay, pretty, pretty, pretty. So speaking of pink, before we move on to the mealy bug thing, look at this beauty I have. Let me get this off the tripod. Remember the other day I said I couldn't remember what my third um, specimen was from Leaf and Clay. Well, it was this guy. Mammillaria Pink Powder Puff. Isn't she cute? These pretty little pink flowers that open up in the daytime and then they close at night. I love that. Love that, love that. A bunch more get, oop, bunch more getting ready to happen. Well, they match my nail polish. <laughs> super cute, super cute. Focus, baby, focus. This guy over here, is a snow white waffle plant. Regular house plant, not a succulent. Um, she was a, she wasn't on clearance. She was just a disheveled looking thing in the house plant section of Lowe's. And of course I brought her to the cash register and said, um, look at this guy. You know, the issue, and I know I'm jumping the gun here. I know I'm switching gears, but when you buy house plants at places like Home Depot and Lowe's, they usually have them like in the indoor section. And sadly, they're just overwatered. They're overwatered, so oftentimes you're gonna already come home with pests. Um, and that's a thing you need to be conscious of. You're already gonna have either fungus gnats in there, which don't hurt the plant, but they're annoying and they're hard to get rid of because they lay their eggs in the soil. Um, and with, you know, unless you dry it out and somehow kill the eggs, you'll just have a recurring problem. 
they they also plant these house plants in a very water retentive medium like a uh, peat moss with soil and it's packed in there so like if you ever go there and you'll see the trays are full of water and the plants soil is really really soggy and a lot of times the house plants are kind of ruined so this is one of those specimens she's a pretty color she's up in my daughter's room purple purple and I got her for a dollar I broke her up into this piece and I'm trying to do another little piece over in my my Disney room. Um, in the, this was in the Dollar General, I think. Cute, right? Fits the theme of my room. Um, so this is another little piece. And she's doing well over here. Um, low light plant, waffle plant. This is the Snow White version, they call it. I thought that was very appropriate for this room. Okay. Back to the mealybug. So this little plant over here, is a Crassula marginalis. I didn't know what it was for the longest time. I finally found it online. It is such a pretty little plant. Very, very, very delicate. Very delicate rosettes. Are we focusing? Very delicate rosettes. Uh, very delicate stems. And she's looking a little not so happy right now. And the reason for it is she was originally in my jade plant outside. My um, I have a jade, regular crassula ovata, and I have also in there, and I'll show it to you, a trailing jade, the Senecio Jacobsensii, or however you say that. And I found a mealybug on the trailing jade. Took care of it. Found another one, took care of it, um, and in the meantime, decided this guy wasn't thriving well in there. I think she needed more water than the jade plant does. So I took her out and put her in here. And then, you know what? Yeah, found a mealybug on her, thought I got it, found another mealybug another day. And then one night, I got my magnifying glass and my cheaters, and when you know it, this thing was totally infested. It's really important to really inspect your plants well, especially these kinds, I feel like this is not focusing, especially these kinds that have tiny little rosettes. It's hard to see. These mealybugs are sneaky. They love to find dark crevices and spots, and they once they find a place they like, they just sit in there and they suck the sap out. And look, these leaves are falling off now. Um, I had to do drastic measures to this guy because she was all infested, all underneath here and in her soil and everything. So I'm hoping she's going to return to life. She's just limp and unhappy right now. Um, I took her completely out of this pot. I completely sprayed her inside and out with rubbing alcohol then I gave her a water bath to get off any of the dead mealybugs. And then I let her sit for a day. And then I put her back in here with some fresh new soil. And I'm hoping, oh, her leaves are just falling off. I'm hoping, oh, look, that's a root. Oh. I'm hoping she is going to come back to life because I really had to... Um, give her a thorough, thorough treatment. So, um, yeah. Hopefully she will come back. I know I've said that twice now, but she makes me sad. Okay. Anyways, now I need to be careful because I have new plants and we don't want new other plants getting infected. And that is part of the problem. Um, and that's what it's important when you get any kind of plant from these big box stores that you repot, you know, unless it's like an orchid, you know, where orchids, they don't like that kind of shock. I learned that the hard way, but you got to get them out of the soil that they have them in um, and potentially any pests. Unfortunately, mealybugs, you know, they're one of those things. They're like head lice. If any of you have kids and, they're, and your kids have ever come home from school when they were young with head lice, you miss one bug, you're starting all over again. So it just... 
pays to be diligent and go out there with a magnifying glass and just check your plants um, and make sure. So that's her. And I will show you another plant that I have found some and treated today. This is another little um, discounted little plant that I got at Lowe's. This is an arrowhead. And they are also very relatively easy houseplants to grow. They require only medium. And I cut away all her dead leaves. I got her for 60 cents. Okay, 60 cents. And she is sitting in a room that I don't go into very much. Um, but it gets really, really great afternoon light. And I noticed this morning she had a bunch of mealybugs also all over her. Um, this is all her new growth because I had really cut everything down. I still feel some fried leaves that I didn't get. Um, but I sprayed her thoroughly now with rubbing alcohol and I let it dry. And after this, I'm going to rinse her in the shower to get any residue of the rubbing alcohol off and then put her back in her location on the dresser in, in my daughter's room. So yeah, she'll be a very pretty plant once she fills in and I'll give her a good inspection tomorrow to make sure that I got all those little critters. They, so see, even though this came home um, and I repotted her right away, you know, I probably didn't inspect the plant very well. And even though I gave her no soil, she probably already had a mealy bug on her and it doesn't take much. So you see, house plants, succulents, it really doesn't matter. I find the one thing I don't get mealy bugs on, hopefully, knock wood, are outdoor plants, like plants in pots that are outdoors, out of the screens, out, you know, in the garden. I don't, I've never had any issues with that. So I'll keep my fingers crossed. Um, but let me show you something real quick too. Speaking of house plants, this is one of my many philodendrons that I have all over the house. I got to show you, I got to share with you. I don't keep these in soil at all. I just keep them in water. <laughs> Look at her roots. Every now and then I'll go in there and hose her off, um, shower her off to get any like mildewy type leaves or whatever. But this is what I do. And I know it's very unconventional. This is how you start a philodendron. But look at her. She's very, very happy. Every now and then I rotate her. You see, look, this one's getting like starting to do the hangy thing. But yeah, I have these all over the house. Um, they're low light, they're easy maintenance, and they're pretty. And this one's got some variegated and some green. And if you want to start propagating, you just cut a leaf where you see this little, make sure you have that little like nod, node, sorry, nod, node, and you get that in water and it will just sprout roots. Look, this has got even, um, no, nope, that's not it actually. But look over here is another node. So yes, you just cut. Cut as many leaves as you want. Stick them in water and watch them grow. My little fell dungeon. I have one in my laundry room. I have two in my kitchen. Um, they're excellent. And then, of course, you got to remember to go in and fill up the water. And every now and then I'll throw a couple of pebbles of Osmocote for food. So, all right, let's get to that other jade plant with the mealybugs. So this is where I originally had that marginalis. And when she was not looking happy, I thought it was because of the watering. But what it really was, was the attack of the mealybugs. Um, and I had, you know, pulled her out, like I told you already, not realizing that this guy had some also. I think it was this one I found first, picked up, you know, picked off one or two, and then found another one, picked off those two, and then when I discovered the other one, I was like, oh, my God, really had to treat that one. I find my crassulas are more susceptible to mealybugs than any other plant. I have had mealybugs on this jade before, last year, I think. And, you know, I don't know why. So 
When I found the one on here, like I said, I did it with a Q-tip. I thought I'd taken care of it this morning. I came out here and looked, and let's see. I'm not sure if it's going to focus. Uh, if you look right there, there's one booger. I'm not sure if it's clear, but you know, mealybugs, if you're not familiar with them, but I'm sure you all are, they have like a whitish looking body. They suck the sap from the plant. They're very slow movers, but they multiply quickly. And then they leave behind, I don't remember the technical term, this cottony substance. Usually that's what you see. And when you see that, you have to really inspect your plant because by then you probably have a bunch of them. So since this now is the third time I've seen them. What I'm going to do for her today is I'm going to put her in the shade and I'm just going to spritz that whole plant with rubbing alcohol. And then once that dries, I am going to hose her off because you want to make sure that rubbing alcohol residue comes off. Even though the alcohol evaporates and you're left with water, you definitely want it just hose them down and definitely don't do this with them being in the sun. That will just be a case of sunburn. You will be so sad. All right, here we go. We're just going to spritz her everywhere with alcohol and make sure we get all inside the leaves and underneath the stem. Just in case we missed anything kind of good to move the leaves around. Hopefully you get in there. Get all of these baits underneath. Because we definitely don't want any kind of infestation because they quickly spread. Yep. I don't know what the rubbing alcohol will do to my cut end. It's been two days, so hopefully that won't affect it. But all underneath, one more. Oh, that's my regular jade there. Whew, stuff's strong. Okay, and then we're going to also just get inside there where the soil is. And then we'll let this sit for about 10 minutes or so. And then we'll hose her off. Well, not with the hose. That'll be a little too harsh. There we go. All right. Hopefully we got them all. But the good thing about doing it with a spray bottle is, you know, it kind of drips into the crevices in between the leaf nodes versus, you know, the Q-tip. You don't really always get everything, so. All right, that should do it. Did I do this guy? Yeah, I did. Whew. Very drying on the hand, so that's for sure. And I've already looked at my regular Jade. He seems to be okay, but I'll keep a close eye on him because they're sharing the same pot. Another indication a lot of times will be deformed leaves, but I don't see anything on him, so. I think we're going to be okay, hopefully. I won't treat him unless I see something. And so far, I don't see anything. Oh, what's that? No. Okay, we're good. All right. In about 10 minutes, we'll hose her off. And then we will leave her here for a day or two to make sure that there is no um, rubbing alcohol residue on the leaves so she don't sunburn. Okay, it's been about 20 minutes since I sprayed the alcohol. In the meantime, I potted up <clears throat> my new succulents from Emily, my mother of thousands. I'm putting her in here temporarily. Um, start getting her acclimated to the um, sun where I'm going to wind up putting them. And I'm so excited about her. I'm going to give her some water. But for now, right now, we're going to spritz off all this residue. If you see 
you can see the residue. Let me see if I can zoom in. See how it's got like a whiteness to it on the leaves. That's the rubbing alcohol residue. So we just want to get that off. And then we'll keep her here in this spot, which doesn't get any direct sunlight for a couple of days. Give her a good inspection and make sure she's good. All right, let's clean her off good. And she's going to be much happier. I am sure. There we go. I don't know if I got any on there. You know, it's also nice to give your plants a bath every now and then, too. Clean up the leaves. Let's get underneath. How come my, I'm looking for spray. There we go. Oh. That'll be good. She will enjoy that. It's like taking a shower. <laughs> All right. Get in there by the soil, too. Mm-hmm, her. Meanwhile, we're giving the plant a nice muzzle. Clean everybody off. And give everybody a nice little bath here. I'm sure they appreciate it. This thing is the best. I think this was one of my first videos. I showed some things I got for Christmas, and I love this thing from, I don't know, I don't know where my husband got it, Home Depot or Lowe's probably. It's great because you can spray and you can mist and you also can do a stream, see? So as a matter of fact, let's give our um, mother of thousands some water. She was a little dehydrated. Now you gotta be careful, I guess, because I see that water will collect in these leaves that are a little folded up right now. Um, so, we'll, like I said, we'll keep her first over here for a day or two, then we'll move her to the other spot on my lanai where she'll get a little bit more sun. We'll just acclimate her gently because I'm not sure where these were in Emily's garden, if they were part sun, part shade. And yeah, all right, so that's it, guys. I will keep you updated if we have any mealybugs that return. In the meantime, be vigilant. Check your plants every day or at least once a week, if at all possible. Use a magnifying glass. Um, like I said, don't wait until you see the cottony stuff. By then, you've got an infestation. So get out there, check your plants, treat them like your kids, you know, um, do what's best for them, and that's it. All right, I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon. Bye.